Recall at first semester, our goal was to find the slope of the tangent line of a function. In the beginning, we decided we could approximate that slope by finding the slope of a secant line. Then when we wanted to improve our approximation, we let the two points on the line get closer and closer and closer together until essentially the distance between them was zero. We had to use a limit expression in order to avoid a division by zero problem, but that's how we got our answer. That's how we arrived at this idea of finding a derivative. We actually have a similar problem second semester with integral calculus, the calculus of finding areas under curves. We know that we could find, we could approximate the area under a curve by chopping up the intervals into bunches of little rectangles and adding up the areas of the rectangles. Now we could make a better approximation by using more rectangles. And in fact, if we use more and more and more rectangles, if we let the number of rectangles approach infinity, again, we're gonna to have to use a limit expression, we'll have, it turns out, an exact value, an exact value for that area under the curve. So this is what the founders of calculus did. This is what they decided that if they could use infinitely many rectangles, they would get an exact value for the area underneath a curve. And they wrote this notation that you see here to show that. So this is a little maybe distressing, this notation. So let me tell you what this means. We have here the part that looks like an E. That's the Greek symbol sigma, the Greek letter sigma. And it's been used historically in mathematics to add up a bunch of things. So that's what we want to do. We want to add up a bunch of areas of rectangles. So here, we're letting n stand for the number of rectangles. We're going to get let that number of rectangles move toward infinity. And we're going to add up the area of all of those rectangles. Well, now how do you find the area of a rectangle? You can see it here. We use base times height. This problem, this expression happens to have height times base. So that delta x, that's the distance across the interval. So the width of each rectangle a change in x. We used to subtract time values to find out how long a distance under the velocity curve we were covering with our rectangle. And then this factor here, f of c sub k, how did we find the height of the rectangle? Well, we took one of the x values on that interval and we plugged it into the velocity function, or whatever function it is that we're trying to find the area under. And sometimes we used the left corner, sometimes we used the right corner, sometimes we used the middle. It turns out that it doesn't actually matter which of the heights you choose because as we let our number of rectangles go toward infinity, the rectangles become infinitely thin, which means there's really only, there's only one point essentially wide. They're only one point wide, which means there's only going to be one height possible, one function height possible. So that's what this notation it means. It says add up the areas of infinitely many rectangles. So this is exactly what we want to do. It's just the founders of calculus looked at that and said, okay, we need something that's more usable. So Leibniz is credited with writing a new, using a new notation for the definite integral. So this is the notation he created. This is the notation we're going to use. This symbol, you've, I'm sure you've seen it in your book if you've been looking through or looking at your free response notebook. That symbol is called the integral. And it's, it looks like a giant S. It really is derives from a giant letter S used to take the place of that Greek letter sigma, meaning add up a bunch of. So we're going to add up a bunch of stuff. We're going to start, we would say the integral from A to B of F of X. So A is the lower limit. That's the left hand side, the smallest input value we care about. B is the furthest right input value that we care about. And we're still going to have the height of the rectangle times the width of the rectangle. Just notice this dx, that comes from the delta x expression in the limit, the sigma notation expression you saw up above. Delta x means a very small change in x. dx means an infinitely small change in x. But still we're going to add up a bunch of heights, or areas of rectangles, which come from the height times an infinitely thin with. So we read the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So this new notation, we're going to use it all the time second semester. But remember what it means. It just means find the area under the f curve 
between the left limit and the right limit. If we know some more calculus later, we're going to find a way to do that no matter what function the f function is. But for now, if that f function traces out some kind of shape that we recognize from geometry, we can still use our knowledge that this expression means find the area under the curve from negative 2 to 2 to find this value, to find this integral. So remember that. Let me move this up here. 4 minus x squared, we talked a little bit in the last section about functions that look like this. If I had x squared plus y squared equals 4, that would be a circle of radius 2. 2 squared is 4. Circle of radius 2 centered at the origin. So when I try to solve that for y and just use the positive square root part, we're talking about the top half of a semicircle. So here's what I have. I have my, this is my x's and my y's. What I have here is the graph of a semicircle. That's negative two, that's positive two. This is a symbol, this is an expression that means find the area under the curve I just drew between x is negative two and x is positive two. So you don't know any calculus way to do that yet, coming soon, but we do know that the area of a semicircle is one half the um, pi, times the radius squared, so the radius in this case is 2. And I would say that the value of this integral is 2 pi.